For long as I've been doing this, John, and I've been doing this for a really long time, most of the attention and the focus in security has really been at the perimeter and at the end point. But in the zero trust world that we live today, where we have to assume that the attacker is already within our network, that leaves a giant gap for us to find the attacker and evict the attacker before they can do major damage. So why don't you just get your perspective on that and your perspective on lateral security in general? Well, first, a, a secure perimeter, a boundary between what's internal and what's internal is still critical and is still a necessary starting point. And since endpoints like PCs are mobile, they need the same thing. They need boundaries when they're out and naked on the internet. So that's a starting point. That was a difficult enough starting point for many businesses to achieve. It's not a hard, it's not an easy problem. So first getting that stable, then we the attackers said, okay, now we'll move to be doing, trying different things. And really the business units as well, they had needs for applications that had to go through the firewall, had to work with mobile employees and the attackers followed followed the same path inside. So it's, it's a, a strong perimeter is still necessary, but obviously not sufficient. So the ability to deal with the speeds and the variety of applications on the inside um, is an important capability in detecting and doing threat hunting. Not just detecting attackers that are already there, but detecting them quickly when they get there is really important. Changing time to detect from days to hours has to happen or you're dead. You're never going to meet the business needs. You'll be in the papers every week. Getting hours down to minutes is the next thing that has to happen. So the ability to have security controls that can have visibility into the key attacks that are making their way through and taking advantage of the openings we have to put in to support the business is critical and it's a game changer. So John, like we are talking, NIST you know, also recognizes this and they have published guidelines, but those guidelines really focus on segmentation. And segmentation is really important, it's foundational, but it stops the obviously bad stuff from happening. And attackers know that you might have segmentation in place. So what they're doing is using things like stolen credentials to start and progress their attack on legitimate channels. So what do you think we need to do? Do we need to evolve these standards more to include other tools and techniques beyond segmentation? Well, I think whenever you see guidelines from NIST or the Cloud Security Association, those are always just starting points for businesses. And when they're talking about things like segmentation, it's important to realize segmentation is not just drawing lines across the architecture. It's what policies are enforced both on those lines when traffic's passing through and also within a particular segment, what sort of traffic is, is applicable or acceptable. You know, for example, in a segment where the sysadmins or our developers are working, there's certain types of behavior we'd allow and certain user type behavior we shouldn't allow. The ability to recognize the difference in the use of an application, not just the use of a protocol, um, and the, the use of certain types of users is very key. So to achieve, ever to achieve something like zero trust, we have to have a much better visibility into um, things like behavior, and we have to have much better false positive, false negative performance than we saw in the old days. And the final thing is we need to take advantage of some of the new capabilities of virtualized data centers and infrastructure as a service is giving us, where there's security primitives that can be implemented at the virtualization layer that sysadmins can't undo. Um, because we've known what to do in security, but there's been a lot of obstacles in, in getting it done when security did not have the ability to configure a switch or configure a server or make sure security settings stayed set. Well, couldn't agree with you more. Like you need the segmentation, you need to understand the connections that are legitimate or not, and then you need to understand the conversation that is taking place, the behaviors that are in place. To do a lot of this, whether it's at the perimeter, the endpoint, or lateral security, Customers have invested in a lot of different tools. At the same time, the environments are shifting. It's no longer like all data centers and all the assets live on-prem. They're moving into multi-cloud environments. And all of this together is layering on a lot of complexity. And complexity is the enemy of security. So just want to get your perspective on, you know, how should customers sort of approach this? Are there any guiding principles or advice that you would give them? Yeah, before I address the complexity, there's opportunities here as we move to virtual data centers and, and the use of the cloud and infrastructure as a service as the cloud. You know, all those tools, we've known what to do in security for a long time, and we've had a lot of tools. But it was always hard. Security did not have sysadmin access to the endpoint. We could not patch things. We could not make our agents, security agents, stay installed 
if sysadmins uh, remove them in the name of performance or debugging something. When you start thinking about a virtualized world where we have a, a virtual administrator view where we can make some security things permanent, they're always going to be baked in. Or even when we start looking at infrastructure as a service, the Azure's and the AWS's of the world, they have built-in security internals that we can take advantage of that we've never had the visibility before. So this movement to sort of all apps running on private cloud or public cloud, there's actually security opportunities to make progress there. Complexity is a key issue. We're nobody's using just one cloud service and the attackers are having a field day on misconfigured cloud services, just as they had a field day on misconfigured Windows and Linux and Sun servers going back for, de for decades. So there's actually as big an opportunity to make advances in security here as there is an increase in the complexity and the threat. So especially when customers approach like multi-cloud environments, how should they approach their tool set? Because it's really hard to say, I'm going to build one data center with you know, one set of tools and then have a completely different set of tools in a different environment and still maintain you know, a consistent security posture. But this is what customers are being forced to do. We'd just love to get your perspective there. Yeah, I think when, you know, when it's hybrid cloud, where it's public cloud, I mean, private cloud in the data center and infrastructure as a service is the public cloud, those are where the same tools should be used. The architecture should span across uh, public and private infrastructure as a service. And that's the best way to go versus using different tools out in the cloud. When you start looking at use of software as a service, things change. So we start th seeing a lot of API type security issues. And then there's an ability to where the APIs into the software as a service environment are used. There's an ability for us to inject security inspection there. And I think we'll find that the most successful programs will find the ability to choose tools that can run in the uh, data center and in infrastructure as a service that also have that capability to do things like API security and behavioral inspection. So before we close out, John, um, there's one more thing that I wanted to touch on. And that is really securing the inner workings of applications. A lot of what we've talked about is, you know, north-south interfaces, but increasingly the API, especially for modern applications where the microservices uh, all communicate with each other via APIs need to be observed and protected. Any thoughts there? Any guidance there? Yeah, I think when we start thinking about overall software supply chain security, whether it's all internal apps or using external apps or cloud apps, those API points are going to be very key, both in understanding how they work and having them be built, the communications to them built in more secure ways, kind of getting security built in and evaluating products based on the security of their services available. So the first step, obviously, we're going to be forced to use many things that don't meet our rigid demands for secure applications. So the tools to be able to detect anomalous traffic or flat out things we know should not occur across APIs are going to be very critical. Well, a great discussion, John, and thank you so much for spending the time with us and for helping our audience sort of figure out things for themselves as they put their architectures down for uh, a stronger security posture in their environments. Thank you again for taking the time. Thanks for having me.